Well, okay. Here we go. We're live. Hey, uh, hi everyone. Hey. hey everyone. Oh, hey, guys. Mitch. Mitch. What? <laughs> Let me just turn the uh, the volume. Uh, have you got your gold star back now? Uh, no, I got a blue star. Okay, hang on one second. That's room there presenter. Go. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay, Thank okay, you. okay. All right. Hi everyone. How are you? I need a gold star. <laughs> yeah. I need a gold star. Tick VG. Have the day off. Top of the class. Nice. Welcome, welcome everybody. Well, nice first of all, uh, before we go into the main event, you'll notice that there are three people here. We've got what? a special guest with us today, Michael Winter. But before we get into that, I just want to say congratulations, Mitch. As you can see from Mitch's t shirt, I got 250,000 leads with Up Viral. Well done, well done. And behind Mitch is a huge certificate. I mean, it is, if you were to hold it up, he won't go and get it because his microphone lead won't, headphone lead won't reach. If it, how big is it, Mitch? It, well, like, uh, you can't see away. my hands. I can't go wide enough to show you how big it is. It's big. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate no worries. the acknowledgement and, and the kind words always from you guys. It's a wonderful... Uh, thing to serve you I'm and everybody else i'm always full of kindness for you mitch so let's move on and stop talking about you <sighs> all for right a <laughs> <laughs> so uh everyone has joined us today because of something pretty amazing that i saw a couple of weeks ago i can't remember the exact time i saw this but it was posted in what we call our success channel that we have on slack and when i saw it i went that can't be right <laughs> and it was about this guy who had got 3,000 and something leads during a, his trial period, his $1 trial period. And I was like, hang on a minute, I really need to know what is going on here. And it turns out that that person, that gentleman was a guy called Michael Winter. Michael, welcome to everyone. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for having me on, first of all. Um, yeah, my name's Michael, and uh, I run a digital marketing agency called Lightbulb Media. And um, it's been running since the uh, beginning of 2017. Um, Self-taught marketer. I used to work in construction, did that for 10 years, uh, traveled mm. quite a lot around, um, specifically the Middle East and, and a lot around the UK doing that, uh, but decided it wasn't really my passion. I wanted to do something more creative, so started um, learning about digital marketing and then kind of took the plunge and um, been doing that. And why, why, did, why, why did you choose? I'm going to ask you about your client in a minute and also the relationship. Why did you choose Up Viral to do this? So do you want to tell us a little bit about, because <laughs> the interesting thing about the client here that you did this work for is it was almost like they gave you instructions to fail. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make it easy. <laughs> do, do you want do you want to explain to everyone because there's a great story just about the client to be quite honest do you want to explain what that is yeah um so the client we we, we started working with a client in um let's say the second week of december and they were brand mm. new they literally um it's an italian brother and sister alessandro and roberta and they had um, a lot of success with a with a travel agency Obviously, the pandemic hit and that totaled mm. their, their business entirely, really. So they mm. wanted something to kind of occupy themselves, generate revenue, but they're also active people. So they wanted they wanted something else to, to occupy their minds. So they started this mm. up. I think the site went live. If it wasn't the end of November, it was the beginning of December. It was, it was only a week or two before we started working with them. And uh, they kind of said... We, we know we want you to help us get uh, get uh, get some orders in the door and get some leads and that kind of stuff. Um, but we don't really we're not really set up for huge quantities of orders. So get mm. some sales, but <laughs> do us a favor and don't get too many. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Thanks very much. Like, once the cat's out of the bag, it's not easy to then like dwindle down sales at will. So mm. um, so that's a remit that not many marketers get, I don't think. So so we can well, hang on. Hang on one second. Go on. The real funny thing here is. Michael just said that their business was the travel agency. Now, we 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 asked, and I don't know whether anyone has picked it. I want everyone do have a guess. Don't don't give anything away here, Michael. Have a guess what these people asked Michael to launch. Okay, it's brother and sister. Welsh Italian? No, no, Italian. Italian. Have a guess. Their business went up because of COVID. It essentially fell off the tree. 
have a guess. The person who gets it right, what it what the product is that he asked Michael, they asked Michael to pr promote, will get a T-shirt. Okay, have, chuck it. Just 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 put it in there, and then we'll 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 see what happens. So they basically opened up a site a week before and said, "Don't get us sales." Yeah, but don't not too many. <laughs> get yeah, us sales, don't get too many. Sales. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it's not Airbnb. No, I don't think it's pasta. It's not coffee. It's not pizza. Tell everyone what it is, Michael. So right, I need to get the pronunciation of this right now because this is on. Okay. This is going to be recorded. So it's um, yeah. charcuterie platters. Um, it, basically, it's meal kits delivered in a box, ready to eat. Yeah. But a, a charcuterie yeah. platter is like um, a selection of cured meats and cheeses, uh, chutneys, breads, that kind of thing. It's, it's Italian. Okay. Tradition. Yeah, obviously, there's a, I can see the link between travel agency and food. No problem. Get it 100%. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. So what, what made you, so David, no, it was not that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was most definitely not that product. Yeah, let's, let's not mention it. I'm not even going to mention what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talk i think we should go to the slides because we could talk about the, the this stuff i think why don't we go to the slides and date and michael let's put you in the driving seat now you we, we my you know mitch and i will ask you questions as you go through it do you want to take us through the, how the campaign broke down because we know it's um, what the product is and you're using up viral do you want to take us through everything now yeah absolutely sure um so uh, yeah, I put together a kind of presentation, there's multiple slides, and it will cover um, basically the full breakdown of the entire campaign that I used during mm. the, the uh, $1 trial. Oh, one thing, sorry, before yeah, everyone yeah. asks, you're going to get access to not just these slides, but a ton, a ton, everything that Michael Go has done, emails, templates, ads, everything, you're going to get it all at the end of here, okay? Wow. Everything, okay? Yeah, that's such a fun to go along to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, no problem. Yeah, so um, we ran the campaign. This is a full breakdown. Uh, roughly, uh, well, it was 3,149 leads, uh, to be exact. Mm -hmm. I'll explain yeah. why uh, there's the missing one now. So we ran the campaign for a little under a week. Um, we launched it on the uh, 16th of September, more or less at midnight. The, the Facebook ads we used to, to gain traffic uh, went live. We closed it at 3 p.m. on the 22nd of December. And the reason it closed at that specific time was because we wanted to, um, we needed to pick a winner, contact the winner, and um, and get their postal address and everything so that we could get the delivery of the prize out to them on the 23rd because we positioned it that they would win a Christmas hamper on the 24th, which was Christmas Eve. So um, very, very short time frame of, for the giveaway run. And in, the, in that time, we managed to get uh, just under 8,000 landing page views, 1,300 social shares, um, a little less than 700 custom actions. And uh, it's 3149, not 3150, because one of those is me, ah. of course. When, when, um, <laughs> when, when I launched the thing, I, I had to test that it was working. So, um, so I can't claim that one. So it's okay. 3159. <laughs> fair, fair enough. So um, we've kind of covered me a little bit, actually, um, yeah. already. So I'll just skim over this. Um, spent 10 years working in construction, launched my own website, uh, Digital Marketing Agency. Uh, we now are focusing actually on the educational side of things a lot more. So an offshot of light bulb media is Learnables, where we try to educate people who are um, struggling to get um, traction, traffic leads and sales, that kind of stuff. Specifically, people who are just getting started, brand new sites or underperforming sites, and they haven't managed to get it going yet. And uh, just a touch of professional courtesy, I, I do want to mention this. The client and the case study we're going to look at, uh, it wasn't actually a client of light bulb. So Market Chart is a, um, an agency uh, brand of mine. And okay. um, I think it's only um, right that I point out yeah. that Link Contro, the company we're going to look at, uh, they were clients yeah. of Mark, which are rather than of mine. I, 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 gotcha. Okay, Good. so um, let's have a quick look at the client themselves. So, charcuterie boxes, assuming I am pronouncing that correctly, someone correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, again, we've gone into it already that they were brother and sister, needed something new because of the pandemic. Um, and they said to me, Website's just gone live. We need some help, but please don't make your help too good because um, we can't uh, we can't cover a lot of sales. As I said, thanks very much. So, um, so how do you control sales? That's not an easy remit to be given, if I'm perfectly honest. So that was one of the main drivers behind um, running the giveaway because 
had it been, or if it was successful, and luckily it, for us it was, um, firstly, we could take advantage of building uh, an email list from day one, which not many people do. It's something that a lot of people put off. So mm -hmm. I saw an opportunity for us to grow uh, our email list from the very first day, more or less, which was useful, of course. And then also, um, if we got hundreds and hundreds of leads, which is what I was, you know, blue sky thinking, that's what we mm -hmm. get. We would be able to segment that list and just email market smaller sections of that list. So that if there was a lot of sales coming from the email marketing, we were able to control it. We can control that influx by sending out segmented mm. email um, sequences. So that was one of the main drivers behind actually running the giveaway itself. Okay. So oh, this uh, slide is presented properly. I'm not sure if some of them aren't going to work, um, but anyway. I'm moving around. I'm moving us around. That's yeah. right. So, um, so there's an image missing there, but it's it's not relevant. It's decoration only. So um, okay. these are basically the uh, the areas of a given uh, giveaway that I think are important elements. And uh, mm. I'm not going to go into these one at a time right now. This is just an overview. Basically, we're going to deep dive into each of these, and mm. um, I'll discuss why I think each of them are important and cool. what we did and why we did it. And then, as um, Mark mentioned. So I, I put together a pretty comprehensive Google Doc, which is a, a breakdown of the campaign A to Z. So A to Z, so Americanized, A to Z. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I tell myself off for that one, don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a breakdown, um, full screenshots of the landing page, the sharing page, all the social actions, everything you need to do to set it up inside the Upfire dashboard itself, plus the Facebook ads, the exact Facebook ads I ran to get traffic to the site, and the email sequence that we've just started running to the list. So the follow-up after the campaign is given uh, is, is closed. So you'll have a full um, start to finish campaign to, to, to rip basically, cool. copy and paste it and do what you want with it. Thank you. So first things first, relevant prize, do not, do not, do not give away an iPad <laughs> or a MacBook or a bloody home entertainment system, unless you sell those things, of course. If you sell those things, great. But if they aren't relevant to your target audience, then don't give them away because if you have, um, for example, if you have a sleep app, say you have a freemium or a premium sleep app, uh, I'm going to enter your giveaway for a MacBook, whether I care about your sleep app or not, because I want a MacBook. And that's not building a targeted, relevant audience. So pick a prize that's relevant to your audience. That's the golden rule, I think. Um, otherwise, you might have a successful giveaway. Great. Who cares if, if they're useless and you can't market to them in the future? Um, so that's, I think, rule number one. Then um, during my research phase, I, 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 I don't have a lot of experience with giveaways at all, really. So I reached out to somebody who I thought would be able to help me and give me some pointers. Uh, so this uh, very helpful guy called Stu, who runs a website called Giveaway Frenzy. And I want some pointers from him. What makes um, a giveaway successful? Why does some fail? Blah, blah, blah. And um, I can't put any weight behind this. This is just purely his advice. But he said uh, something really interesting, that physical products tend to work better than digital products. Now, uh, I want to caveat that by saying, if you have a physical product, that doesn't mean you can't run a successful giveaway. Um, but what you may want to do is hedge your bets and have, um, have physical products alongside your digital products and, and create a prize pack. Uh, and. Um, Okay, sometimes it's not easy. Let's, let's go with the sleep app example. Let's say, for example, you have a sleep app. What physical product can you marry with that that will make the giveaway more appealing? Um, ergonomic or, or uh, memory foam pillows, weighted blankets, uh, night lights, whatever. It's something that you can create a very, very appealing prize pack with so that you aren't only giving away a digital product. You're having a physical product as well that is likely to increase your chances of getting traction with the giveaway. So, like I said, that's not something I personally tested. I'm just leaning very heavily upon the, that guy's uh, expert advice. If I, if if you don't mind, Michael, let me jump in. We had, yeah, yeah. we had another co-pilot show that I want to highlight, and I don't remember the title and what day it was, but it's in the list, where we had a gentleman, uh, Anthony, right, Mike, or Mark, the was giving a, his ultimate um, offer was the parachutes, right? The sailboard yeah, yeah, yeah. the parachutes. But they gave away a smartphone. And I know the instant thought is smartphone, wrong thing, which was a thing that I thought at the same time. But they're... It, I'm sorry, what, Mark? That was because they had a game. Right. They had an, an app, app that they right. were doing, a game app mm. that was a sailboarding kite thing. And mm. so that led to their final product. So 
go back and watch that show as well. Mm. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So exactly, that's something that perfectly marries what they want to promote with exactly. a physical product. Exactly. So yeah, it backs it up perfectly. Um, so if you aren't able to just come up with a physical product of your own, or if you can't afford to buy, you know, a smartphone to check your app on there, then um, partnerships are a great idea. I mean, even if you even if you can find it easy to just buy a pillow to go with your sleep app, I mean, they're cheap, but partner anyway because they're great for cross promotion because then you get access to a brand new audience anyway for this specific campaign we didn't do that but my next one i plan uh, heavily on, on partnering up with people because i want to reach as many audiences as i can as many people as i can if i can go to somebody's established audience and all i need for them to do is donate the prize and, and market our giveaway i'm going to do that and um, you can incentivize them by saying do me a favor guys donate the prize promote it to your audience and I'll do everything else. I'll set it up all the dashboard. You can use up viral. It's so easy to do that. So they don't know it's easy. Don't tell them that, but you're basically presenting yourself to say, I'll do all the hard work. I'll get it all set up. You donate the prize and email it to your audience as well. And, and we're good to go. And um, you can even offer to do the promotional material, like the social media posts and the emails. I'm including all of that in the Google Doc anyway. So you're going to have a head start on all of these things. So pick a relevant prize and partner with people uh, for product, um, for physical products if you're able to. Uh, another thing that we did um, that I think helped us uh, become successful with the campaign was we incentivized the referrer. So there's with a giveaway, um, with a viral giveaway specifically, there's a built-in objection. The more people that enter, the smaller my chances are of winning. And some people are negative, they're cynical, they think like that. So we handled that objection with the, with the campaign setup itself. So not only did we give away a grand prize, we had a referral prize as well. So if I enter the competition and I invite Mitch and Mark and Mitch wins the prize, he gets the grand prize, great. But I also get a prize because I introduced him to the giveaway in the first place. Right. And I think that that really helped in, in getting people over that small objection. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it also incentivized them to share more because the more that they shared, the greater their chance of winning at least something was. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think that was um, that was something that was that was helpful to us. This isn't critical, but I think it helped. Um, and obviously, I'm using the case study to to refer to all of the the advice I'm giving. So if you're able to uh, link your campaign with an occasion, we use Christmas. There's plenty of um, of occasions throughout the year that you can use, or, or maybe a milestone is is more relevant. Let's say you've hit 1,000 email subscribers or 10,000 followers, and you want to celebrate that, run a giveaway based on that celebration. It, it's a, a hook. It's a way of getting people in. I mean, Italian meal kits, that's got nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever. But we enabled it, a Christmas hamper. We delivered it to their door on Christmas Eve. All of a sudden, that is a huge hook. And the prize is an Italian meal kit that, that's linked to Christmas. And I think people get caught up in these kind of things. We, we've Obviously, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. There'll be media yeah. coverage for that. Valentine's Day from all companies. Same with Easter. Yeah. If you're able to jump in on that and be a part of that, I think it works well. Uh, it's worthwhile. I think it, it's useful. So what you're saying is essentially that it didn't matter. It, it just circumstances happened. It was Christmas. It would have worked just as effectively on Valentine's Day. Any anything, it would have yeah. worked. I'm not saying, yeah, of course, I'm not saying wait until Christmas so you can run a carry. No, I'm exactly. saying like, use whatever right. you can, leverage yeah. whatever you can. There's plenty yeah. of opportunities, but mm. just try to think outside the box a little and reposition mm. whatever you offer so that it matches the time of year or milestone or whatever it may be. Yeah. So if I may, there's a quick question. What is a Christmas hamper? Some of us <laughs> don't know what the phrase hamper means. Oh, Thank really? You. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Is that, is that a um, in the U.S., a hamper is a thing you put your laundry in. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, it is um, it's kind of but you put food in it as well. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, a picnic, like a picnic basket. Do you have it's, picnics in the U.S.? It, it's, oh, yeah. it's a it's a box that food, a selection of food, is put into and is delivered to you. That's okay. what's referred as a hamper. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's a, a, a screenshot of. The landing page itself, like I said, there'll be big screenshots in the Google Doc, so don't worry if you can't mm. see that. Um, but a breakdown then of what I think uh, is important to have a good landing page. Uh, so again, make it relevant to, work, relevant to an occasion if you can, on a milestone, add a hook. Christmas Eve was a big hook for us um, to, to, to receive 
a nice um, luxurious um, box of food on Christmas Eve, I think, uh, was, was a, a big deal for the, for the competition itself. Um, the image of the prize I created fairly quickly inside Canva, and it just portrayed what the prize was going to be. And um, I kept the prize description very succinct. I didn't want to go into a great deal of detail about what the box would contain and all that kind of stuff. Because this is a product that doesn't need education, mm -hmm. I wanted to let the image do the talking. Now, that's not the case if you have a product and you need to educate a little bit. But even still, you keep it concise, keep it succinct. People are not going to read a huge block of text. They want to know what's the price? Why should I care about your price? Oh, yeah, okay, I want that or not. And they'll enter or not. So um, a, a, a landing page should really be succinct with the, with the copy that you use. And um, like I said, we'll, I'll share what I've done so you can kind of copy the, uh, the framing of it if, uh, if you wanted to. Uh, of course, highlight the closing date and time because you want urgency built in uh, from, from the minute that they enter. If your giveaway is free to enter, then, then say so explicitly. We didn't need anybody to do anything beyond giving their um, email away, uh, entering their email address. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that and they didn't think that there was a catch on the, on the yeah. follow-up page or whatever. And so that you can make your email marketing personable, I would um, request a first name rather than a name or, or nothing at all. It, it allows you to then make personable um, comments inside your email marketing. Uh, with mm -hmm. dynamic values, with stuff like, um, hey, Michael, or, or Michael, have you seen this? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then just a quick touch, the, uh, just a quick touch upon uh, GDPR. If you're inside the EU, I'm no expert, so please, please, please do your own research on this. But if you want to email people um, after they've entered the giveaway, if you're in the EU, you need to ask for permission to do that. So make mm -hmm. sure that you do so, because otherwise you could get in trouble and mm -hmm. fines could be big. Uh, but they, like I said, I don't want to be <laughs> responsible for giving GDPR advice. Just uh, do your research, just make sure you, you do cover it. For the sharing page, uh, again, that's just a, a quick screenshot. You'll see that in detail later on on the Google Doc. Um, again, keep it brief, keep it concise, explain how it works, make it skimmable. Um, you think of it like it's a web page. Um, you, you want different colored headings, you want a lot of white space so people can skim over it, underline and bold and all of this kind of stuff so that the, the page looks appealing big blocks of text that people can't skim, they're not appealing, people don't like it, they skip over it, they don't pay attention. Um, of course, we mentioned the referral prize in that, uh, in that sharing page. And a couple of points that I wanted to make about the actual actions then. So <clears throat> only, I, I would suggest only add in the social media channels that you want specifically to grow for your company because you, you could have been into the paradox of choice where you give people 20 options that you want them to take. And they're like, oh, I don't know whatever I've entered, and then they, they take no action at all. So be very focused on what it is you it, want them to do. They become spoiled for choice, and therefore yeah, 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 yeah. they don't exactly. do it. Exactly, yeah. Too many options, and they make no, no decision at all. Mm. Um, but I would recommend including uh, the WhatsApp and the Messenger um, mm. options always because of bystander effect. So mm. if I publish a Facebook post or a Twitter uh, tweet, <laughs> um, 500 people see it. Great, that's 500 people. But who's actually going to take action? If they're not on the, online at that time, they might not see it. Mm. And if my friends want to support me, they might think, yeah, okay, that, you know, I'm interested in that. I, I, want to, I want to help Michael. But somebody else will do it this time. I, I'm not kind yeah. of Whereas if I send a message direct to their WhatsApp or direct to their messenger, it feels more personable. Firstly, mm. I can almost guarantee they'll see it. And secondly, mm. they're far more likely to take action because I've asked mm. them on a one-to-one -on -one, uh, -on -one -one yeah. basis. Mm. So I'm going to raise my hand and I'm going to pause for a second because there is an opposing viewpoint which is mine mm -hmm. <laughs> on this which channels sh should you do especially for newbies my recommendation is to do them all now okay. i understand some of your comments about presenting too many and stuff but when you're first starting out with some of this you don't necessarily know where people are where your audience is so what i tell people is it's not about you the company or who you know, in your case, the client, it's about finding out where the people are. And I'll give you an example. One of my students did his campaign. And what we found out was that the email share button was used three times more than anything else was, which was okay. a total shock to all of us because this was a college age group. And I was like, <clears> they're <throat> not going to share on email, right? So it's about finding out where they are. And then a couple of campaigns down the road, once you know where they are, stop sharing the others. 
That's really interesting, Mitch. I would come to that if you don't mind, and, and sure. get into a little bit of back and forth. So, what I would be concerned with that, especially when you're you're getting started and you want to get over the line, you don't want to, uh, to you don't want to be paralyzed by trying to make everything perfect. Right. So, if you've got a Pinterest sharing button on there, all of a sudden I'm thinking I don't have a Pinterest presence. So, do I need to build one first? Do I need to build a, a Pinterest account first and get and get all of that kind of set up? So, no. that to me is like I know you don't, but I'm saying. Right. It's a barrier to getting started. I understand. Right? Okay. I don't. I don't have all of those things in place, and I will use that as a reason to procrastinate to not get things live. Yeah. Because this, this, this uh, I just want to just press the pause because I also don't want to press it too much because we've been on twenty five minutes I know, already. I know. So if you can just cut down the amount of interruption, Mitch, let <laughs> my do it. What no, no, time? no. And then we'll do the. But this is interesting. This because I asked Michael, and Michael just touched on something. I asked Michael how quick this campaign took to set up, which right. I don't want you to answer just yet, Michael, because I know you're going to do it in a minute. Okay. And I asked him, why did it, why did you, why were you able to set it up so quick? And it was simple. I didn't, I avoided having things that would procrastinate me setting it up. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very, very, this is one of those things that we notice that whenever we see certain metrics where a campaign has had quick effect, very quick, we notice that it's very light in its, uh, its low fat, shall we put it that way. It doesn't have a lot of spinning rims. Anyway, I thought I'd jump in on that. Carry on, Michael, carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then um, obviously a huge element of it is promotion, getting people to go mm -hmm. to the landing page. Now, we, like I keep saying, we had nothing. We had no um, email subscribers, no um, Facebook followers, nothing. So. I think you're going to struggle. If you've got zero right across the board, you're going to struggle unless you have some sort of paid promotion. We run Facebook ads for the initial traction, and then we just kind of hoped, or I, I, was, I was hopeful that the virality uh, element would kick in, and it did. Um, but it, if you've got an existing audience to go to, then great. You may be able to get the virality earlier in the campaign. I, I felt that in order for us to get, uh, it, for it to get traction in less than seven days, we needed to, to promote it somehow, and, and um, Facebook ads was the option. Sorry, course. you say less than seven days. How long was the campaign running? Uh, it was a little, uh, just about 6.5 days. It was um, from the 16th to uh, the second. Because I, I saw Mitch was just uh, clicking on some stuff, some questions where people said, how long was the campaign going? And when you just said seven days, I, what? Hang on. So it was 6.5 days the campaign run. Yeah, if you want to get specific, it launched on it launched on the on, at midnight on the sixteenth, and then it closed um, six days and fifteen hours later uh, on the on three pm okay, on, uh, cool. on the twenty second. Cool. So yeah, a little bit more than six point five days, let's say. Excellent. So yeah, we spent um, two hundred and ten pound, about thirty pound a day uh, on the traffic campaign, just sending people to the app viral um, <coughs> landing page. We did we didn't set it up on our own uh, domain again, something we didn't have time for, um, so we just used the app viral landing page. And um, I, we, because we had such low social engagement at that time, I piggybacked the, the giveaway uh, and, and set up a, a likes campaign so that we could get some likes out of it as well. So we threw £50 behind that and kind of said, have you heard about our, uh, our Christmas hamper giveaway? Uh, like our page and you can find out how to enter, uh, et cetera. And then that also increased the value of the social media posts that we were putting out throughout the campaign as well. So the very first one went out to a handful of people by the time the final one went out, uh, I would like to have done more than two to three, but <laughs> that, the client was handling that, and I, I couldn't get him to do any more. Okay. Um, but um, but it, by the time the campaign was coming to an end, the um, organic Facebook posts they were reaching a much wider audience. Cool. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into any details about this. This is a bit a quick look at the Facebook campaign itself. Um, but I wanted to point out that because we were a brand new um, brand new company, um, the the people it reached and the brand awareness I felt was important. So even though the actions were not huge, um, it reached 11,000 people. And because you want to get people to know, like, and trust you before they buy, um, it was seen, the, the ad was seen by 11,000 people for the traffic and by 4,000 people for the likes. So it was worthwhile just to get mm. familiarity and, and gain that, um, gain all of that, um, like I said, brand familiarity and brand awareness. So um, I wanted to add a quick Facebook tip um, because if you're running Facebook ads and, and you find it a little bit overwhelming or you can't get it to work, I would recommend that you set up um, some sort of test in it. it. You need to be testing your ads all of the time. So the way that I do that is um, I create uh, slight variations of each major element of an ad 
and then um, test them all against each other. So this is complicated to explain. I'll skim over it. Any questions, I can cover them later on. So I would write headline one and headline two, copy one, copy two, and then create visual one, visual two. Um, I actually only created one visual for this because of time constraints. But then I uh, mishmash all of those together and create um, variations of them all, and then run eight ads to test those six variables. So um, and one ad would be headline one, copy one, visual one, and then the second mm -hmm. ad would be headline two, copy one, visual one, and so on. Um, and that way, um, I've got eight, eight ads running from day one. Mm -hmm. I'll let them run for a couple of days, and then um, I'll assess performance and start killing the ones that are underperforming until at the, uh, at, by the end of the campaign, I should have one or two only running. That, that how, much were you, how much were you on average spending a day? Uh, the, we set it up so that I had a, a total uh, budget of 210 from start to finish. So it was a roughly £30 a day. £30 a day. Okay, roughly. cool. And you can also do that with the CTA buttons as well. And then you would create 16 ads, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. because you're adding yeah. a new variable in. Um, stuff like learn more or play now and all that kind of stuff. Cool. And then this is probably quite a controversial one. So um, I'm going to the details of this. Um, so I also... M Mitch is going to love this. We were talking <laughs> about this. Mitch is going to love this because this is one of Mitch's secret weapons. Right, okay. So um, I, went, I went back and forth in my own head a lot about this and did quite a bit of research as to whether it was worthwhile adding it to specific giveaway sites because mm. the immediate downside of that is... By doing that, am I just going to attract a lot of compers to the to the list, to the, give, the giveaway and ruin my list? And if you're not mm -hmm. familiar with the term compers, it's basically people who are either full-time or part-time and that's all they do all day is enter, enter giveaways and, and they try to win prizes. You don't want those people on your list at all. So if you're not going to follow up properly and clean your list properly, then don't do this. Don't take this step. Um, but if you do, then there's there's a benefit to it. And um, basically I'll explain, oh, I'll just click the keyboard. <laughs> So yeah, can can I can I just can you just I just want to throw it back a little bit because Mitch, this is something you did. Remember you told me about it yesterday. Yeah. It's one of the yeah. things you. Do you want to just share a little bit of what you told me yesterday as well, well? The other side of that is that compers, as you call them, sweepers in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. uh, they also do a really good job of sharing for you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there, what what I typically tell people to do is to use them. Right. Clean them off when you're done, but use mm. them while the campaign is going because mm. they convert really well. If you're looking for uh, effective use of stuff, uh, one of the sites that I use called Sweepstakes Advantage will run an ad for you for 10 bucks. And you if you mm. get three, four hundred people off of that, depending upon what your offer is, blah, blah, blah. That's really cost effective. And, exactly. and they convert at about 65 percent when they come through. Wow. Okay. And I could go on and on and on. I mean, did, you, did, to cover, but... did you find the same same uh, effect as well? Because I know you met you, we spoke about this, Michael, as well. So in the UK, there was only I think three that you could you could um, submit to that would I only do. cover the UK audience. All of the mm. others is either US based or worldwide. Uh, so mm. I couldn't submit to them because we weren't going to be um, shipping the the box to sure. worldwide. So we were we were restricted in that respect. Um, but yes, the, I would completely agree with Mitch because. Um, you want the virality. That's the point of it. You want the virality element to kick in as much as you can. And if they convert as well as they do for, for that mm. sharing side of things, mm. then go for it. Why not? Yeah. Just make sure that you clean it afterwards. It's, it's important yeah. to take that step. And I think, I don't know, people get lazy or procrastinate or whatever, and they don't do that. But um, but but again, a good way of tracking that and, and the, the impact that they have was I created a bit.ly link, and I only used the bit.ly link for the giveaway sites. Mm. So I was able to determine very easily how many people came from the giveaway sites versus Facebook ads or any other channels and, and share them. And, one, and, one, and once you've done the actual campaign, sorry, Mitch. That's all right. Guess what? UpViral lets you create your own custom direct links, but I know oh, that's I hard know. to get to <laughs> in your 14 day trial. So there yeah, is yeah. There's a way of doing that. And, oh, when, cool. when, how, how, and when you actually cleaned the list, did you literally, I know you've got it on your third point here, you sent an email out and were you as cold as, if you don't, if you're not interested in this, please unsubscribe. Uh, yeah, it wasn't impersonal. It wasn't rude, but it was very. It was. It was. Um, it was very specifically saying, if you don't want these emails, we don't want to send them to you. Uh, yeah, and that, uh, it was important. Um, in a quality so manner. That, yeah, I mean, um, we took that step. Uh, so I ran it through um, a tool called Neverbounce, and then I asked for net for email unsubscribe. So um, I'll mention Neverbounce because. 
if you've got a thousand emails or less, you can run it through an Everbonus for free. Um, and I think it's one time only. Um, but in total, to run the 3,000 plus emails through that tool, cost me like 15 bucks, like 12 pounds. Mm. That's a bargain to, to, to yeah. know that my email list is, is clean afterwards. Yeah. And um, yeah, as you said, we, we also specifically ask for unsubscribe. So um, I, I've got a screenshot there because what I would like to have done is put a great big unsubscribe button right in the middle of the email and Wix, so apologies in advance for people who use Wix, it sucks for that respect. <laughs> email marketing is not good uh, on Wix, so don't use it. Um, so basically, instead of just putting a great big button, I had to literally explain to people how they could unsubscribe um, mm -hmm. when they received the, the Wix email. Um, but basically, like to, to touch upon that point, mm -hmm. you don't want people on your list that aren't going to be interested in your products or services. So uh, it, it's bad for open rates. It's bad then for your future deliverability rates. So tell them. Yeah, we, this is what we're going to do. So we laid in that first email. I laid out, you know, this is what you can expect from us. This is the kind of things we do. If you want the emails, great. Do nothing. Just sit back and enjoy. If you don't, get off. <laughs> you know, really, we don't. You don't want your inbox inbox full of stuff that um, you're not interested in. Yeah. And we really, really don't want to send it to you. So um, it was very explicit, um, and I put it in a completely different section of the email so that people understood how to do it and and um, and uh, to, to get them to do it in the first place. Mm. So going back to the the giveaway site, it took me less than an hour to actually upload it to the to the giveaway sites. Um, and like Mitch said, you know, the virality element is, is important, so that's good. Um, but I mean, there's still people. If I can get one or two sales out of that, it's well worth my time. Mm. I mean, everybody buys things. You know somebody who doesn't buy something? Mm. This is my wife as well. I was <laughs> going to say, certainly not my ex, <laughs> certainly yeah. not my ex wife. Yeah, it'd be a real eye opener for her. So they know they're, they're people like they're potential customers. You can mm. tell them you, um, you you get rid of the the disposable and the invalid emails mm. that, that that people use for giveaway entries, and um, and you tell people in your first email you don't want them on the list if they're uninterested, mm. and then you can be confident that the list is a is a, a strong one. Mm. So a full breakdown of the campaign setup um, and how long it took me. Just to give people an idea, I'm not saying you can do it this quickly or maybe you can do it faster than this. Uh, I'm not saying this is a yardstick, but hopefully it, 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 um, it shows people how long roughly it can take and, and what, what you should be aiming at, I suppose. So the initial research, stuff like speaking to Stu, the, um, the giveaway expert, um, competitive research, looking at the copy, whether they ran ads, whether they uh, give, ran giveaways themselves. That took uh, hour and 45. I put together the, uh, the images inside Canva. Um, I just used a Canva template and the images that the client provided, 45 minutes for that. The up viral setup itself, a little bit over five hours, and that was start to finish the whole thing, including all of the templates and everything in the, and the autoresponders. So I wanted to point out, basically, if you remove the research and, and the, the kind of promotion side of things, the up viral element alone, because you need the images, the up viral element alone was less than six hours. Mm. So you can do it just that way. I'm not saying I would recommend you do that, but mm. up viral alone, you can do it in six hours. Well, I, I was able to do it in six hours. Um, and I'm not familiar, I'm no expert with up viral. I was on the trial. It, it didn't, it wasn't like I, um, I, I knew my way around. I had to work it all out mm. as I was going along. Um, and then the Facebook ads, I, I mean, I, I've run Facebook ads for years, so I, I, I was able to set that up pretty quickly and the giveaway sites uh, less than an hour in total. Uh, 10 hours start to finish um, to get it all up and running and, um, and, now, I, want to be, and I just want I just want to ask a very serious question because uh, <clears throat> people will be thinking this and I asked it you Michael you run your campaign is a solo your, your company is a solo company it's you and but you have freelancers that you stick you 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 outsource work to which is That's quite right. common these days and when you talk about the nine nine hours fifty five minutes here that you did, was that just you? Oh yeah, that, that was just me and um, in, and all the all, and all the creatives, the artwork, the visuals, everything we see. Again, that is all you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I like now, I'll go into hang, a hang on, hang on one second. And that's all done in Canva. You are <laughs> not a graphic artist. <laughs> you on, are. Man. 10, 20 years in the construction industry. 10 years in construction, yeah. So, okay. I just wanted to be clear on that because I don't want people thinking, ah, that's because he's great in Adobe or whatever. Oh, my God, no. No, I can't. Drag and drop. I can't do 
Adobe. I, I, I couldn't. I don't. I don't know if it's used Photoshop. I sincerely don't. No worries. No worries. Uh, so yeah, um, it was more or less all done in a day as well. Um, so um, I did some initial research, some initial research, and then spoke with a client on the fourteenth of December, mm. and told them we'd have it live on the sixteenth. So that only gave me the fifteenth to do it all. So um, I literally <laughs> did the rest of it in that one day. Um, cool. So whatever that was, like eight hours, or whatever. Mm. It was a late night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a late night. And then uh, just an overview quickly of the spend, so you know roughly how much it, it would cost if you wanted to start from zero, I suppose. You don't have to stick with these figures. This is just what we did. Um, so 210 on the Facebook. Uh, I threw in the Facebook likes just because I saw an opportunity to piggyback and, and, and build a following. You don't need to do that. It's far from um, essential, barely optional, really. And then uh, the prizes. Uh, so this is the retail cost of the prizes, actually. I don't actually know what, what the client charges at cost yeah. before they have margins yeah. but i put that in just for simplicity okay. and, and then you know the, the one buck on, on up fiber which is what 70 pence 80 pence I don't know. so a little bit less than 400 pound for or, all in cool. nice well done so thank you <laughs> so, yeah, yeah um, honestly, it, i i the, uh, by the way guys i've not seen these slides these are brand new i've not seen any of these slides okay so i'm seeing it for the first time myself so well done michael yeah, cool thank you very much <laughs> yeah so um so yeah a quick overview then just to, to close it off so it ran a little bit more than 6.5 days, but less than seven. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first campaign of any description that we've done for the company. The site had been live by the time the site, the giveaway closed, the site had been live like, I don't know, three weeks or whatever it was, mm -hmm. maybe less, maybe a little bit more, don't recall. Mm -hmm. uh, but I set myself targets. I, I said, right, okay, if, if we're going to do this before Christmas, let's let's have some numbers that we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I wanted about a thousand landing page, landing page visits. And mm -hmm. even though that's the up viral landing page, so it wasn't going directly to our site, it was mm. still like, banging on about brand awareness. People didn't have new to us, it was new. Mm. So we wanted to, to at least get people to see the logo, know about us, start mm. to learn our messaging. And um, honestly, if we'd have gone from zero to 100 email subscribers, um, I still would have been, I still would have sent you guys an email and told you that it went well. <laughs> I really would yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. You know, 100 emails from zero, that would have been great. I would have been delighted. Yeah, so, especially um, on a $1 trial. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, I mean, it outperformed what I expected, um, mm. but I want I want to um, temper that by saying, you know, I I don't want to necessarily say that if I if I'm in this situation again, I'll expect three thousand leads. Um, mm. I'll, I'll still accept a hundred or two hundred as being a successful campaign. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm what, oh, okay, more, cool, cool, okay, carry on. Oh, yeah. So then, like the health of the leads. Um, yeah. So after oh, running yeah. through networks uh, and and having like the undeliverables, which I decided to send to. Uh, I decided to send out anyway, even though Never Bounce recommended I didn't. I thought they, they recommended like 150 of the emails would probably bounce, and it turned out that 30 did. So I, I thought that was a worthwhile um, test. Uh, mm. And then after saying, please, please, please unsubscribe from us, 270 people said, yeah, okay, we will. Um, mm. uh, okay, fine. That's good. So yeah, uh, that's what we wanted. Um, so mm. we were lost roughly through that process of cleaning the leads. Um, we lost about 10%, a little bit more than 10%. So we ended up with 2,800 email subscribers that I am now confident are interested in what we do, which is yeah. amazing. Um, and we've run one email so far in the email campaign, uh, email marketing campaign. We've only sent out one email uh, to date, and those are the that's the open rate click through rate, which is nice. above average. But Excellent. I, I mean, well, as the group grows, we're not going to expect that to sustain. I mean, the quality of the leads, the numbers there just say, "Well done again, congratulations, dude." Well, I, I, I think it's significant, by the way, that some, you know, addressing the uh, contest sites, the sweepers, whatever, uh, the fact that maybe only 10, 11 percent of those people fell out. A lot of people say it's going to be 50 and 60 percent of those people are just crap. Now, obviously, you still have longer to go to figure out how much those people will end up buying. But congratulations, 10 percent is awesome. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's why I wanted to display those figures, because mm. uh, I think, like beforehand, like, like I said, I went back and forth in my own mind a lot about whether it was worthwhile, whether I was potentially mm. um, dirtying up the list, so to speak. Um, and I was, I was really pleasantly surprised about the, it only being around 10% as well. So I think, um, don't get me wrong, as things go on, people will find they're not interested in what we do. Um, mm. But uh, that won't be because we run them to giveaway sites. I know I'm confident of that. Uh, and then, um, again, just a, a quick tip I thought I'd throw in just to be, mm. you know, try to help people out. Um, so I think this is actually a Wilco tip. I, I think this is where I got it from Wilco himself, but I, I could be wrong about that. So credit to Wilco if it is his. <laughs> so um, run, uh, run a test on your on your subject lines because that's one of the, it's, it's the 
the biggest single factor of, of your open rates, basically. So yeah. I took um, ten percent of the list, which is roughly three hundred. I sent subject line A to the first five percent, subject line B to the second five percent, and I waited a day. Then twenty four hours later, had a look at what the results were, pick a winner, and then send it up to um, send that up to the remaining ninety percent. So, so obviously that helps with the open rates. Cool. And then in terms of um, tracking sales from the giveaway, which um, mm. I'm hoping we will, will generate, we've created a unique discount code that we're giving to uh, giveaway entrants only. Mm. So we call that thank you 20, just as a way of saying thank you for entering, thank you for sharing, etc. cetera. Um, so we know that anybody who redeems that uh, coupon um, through our email marketing yeah. will have been a direct uh, giveaway entrant. So we know that we can, we can attribute then some ROI on it. Okay, two more slides, and then I'm done. I promise. <laughs> I'm running over a lot longer than you expect, guys. I do you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, you keep going. Uh, yeah. So, why do I think it worked? Um, firstly, we positioned the prize well. Um, regardless of whether it was Christmas, Easter, Movember, St. Patrick's Day, it didn't matter. I we just labelled it well, and um, and it, and it caught attention because of that. I think. Uh, of course, we re we incentivize the referrer. I think that was an important element, and I would recommend it. I will always do that now. There, there, there'll never be a campaign I run that, that doesn't have that element, so that the people taking the action can win something as well as the person who's picked out of the draw. Uh, the, the Facebook ads were well targeted. I'll have to accept that, um, but it's not critical. I don't think it's it's just that because we were starting from zero, it, the, the Facebook ads needed to to kick into into gear yeah. and start with some traction. Um, but they are by no means the be all and end all of running a successful giveaway campaign, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and finally, like um, Mark touched upon earlier, I gave myself a shit ton of accountability. Um, yeah. I said to the client, on the 14th, we'll get it running. I knew it needed to run at least a week. Otherwise, it was maybe not pointless, but you've got, you've got to give it a, you know, a bit of time to, to gain traction and get the variety. And if you can get that. Um, so I, I, I think that last point there is really key for everyone. Now, I know that we ask people to take the $1 trial so you can put all this stuff into action. And, and and this is very true. This is really the, the you know, it's like when I saw this and when you think and when I spoke to Michael, the one thing I when he told me it was like I got it all done in a day. I said, Well, how did you manage to said the, the client gave me I had a date, so I acted, I did it. So those of you who have got the one dollar trial, if some of you have not got it yet, I'm gonna share a link with you in a minute so you can get your one dollar trial. Is don't just get a one dollar trial and play with it because you could take that one dollar trial and you can do exactly because michael we're going to give you a link to download all this stuff that michael has done so you can copy it and mold it around your product and don't forget it's got absolutely nothing if you're a business suffering with a covid challenge his client was in the travel agency and pivoted themselves if you're looking for a way of getting and setting up an agency of using up viral, that's exactly what Michael's done. You can do that. If you've got your own product, you can do this. So everyone has no excuse. All you gotta do is give yourself a line in the sand and going, I'm gonna set it up. Have I got have I got everything right? No. Have I is it is it gonna be perfect? No. Do I am I getting free leads from somewhere? Am I getting the best traffic for someone? No, no, no. Doesn't matter. Just get it out. Ship it, ship it, ship it, ship it. It's that famous um, Reed Hoffman quote. Um, I don't know exactly what it was, but it's something like, "If you're not embarrassed of your first version, you've launched too late." Uh, yeah. Like, is that perfect? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. the campaign I said far from it? Absolutely not. Yeah. But um, but I got it out there. And now I've learned some things. I can safely say I can safely say we're embarrassed about everything we put out there. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah, just the final then um I won't go into this in too much mm -hmm. detail because all of these ideas were ripped from um the co pilot show a couple of weeks ago. Uh Dave from Bunk he has some amazing ideas. Um so those are the kind of things that I would do differently next time. Um tell people that they'll get a discount just for entering rather mm -hmm. than them being informed of that in the first email we send out after the giveaway has already closed. Um, if I'm running a giveaway for longer than a week, which I will do next time, um, the adding incentives and getting people to interact and engage throughout the run, I think will be important. So adding, so holding back some of the incentives and then adding them later, I think is a good idea. And then um, heavily incentivizing things that are worthwhile to our business side of things. So um, like, like if we can get a feedback form um, put together and asking people, 
what's their favorite thing about Italian cuisine, blah, blah, blah. And, and then people respond to that. We can be sure then that they are, they are red hot leads rather than just warm leads coming from a campaign like this yeah. uh, and getting them to interact with like menus and that kind of stuff. It's, um, it's just a good way of getting them to not only enter the giveaway, but actually start to give a crap about us as a brand. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Is, yeah, that, is, that, is that is that the is that the last slide or is there? A... Uh, yeah, that's it. so we'll we'll share the Google Doc. Thank you so much for who did uh, stay and listen to my ramblings. And uh, no, you stay there. Uh, if you can just uh, kill the slides, Mitch, and then put ev put everyone back, and we can go into Q and A mode. Now, I just shot over to everyone. The Upvira one dollar trial is there. Go and get it. You can get your one dollar trial now. Okie doke. And by the way, those who got the one dollar trial prior to the campaign. It's exactly the same link. It's for 30 days as opposed to 15 days. Okay, so it's 30 days as opposed to 15. I know we've been saying get it done, and Michael was going about he got it done in a day, but we're going to give you a little bit more breathing room. And also, I'm now, Mitch, if you start chucking the questions, I'm just going to start, I'm going to get the document, the link for the document. Now, this is not a PDF, okay? While well, Mitch starts teeing up some stuff, this will be a Google Doc. And the reason we've made it a Google Doc as opposed to a PDF is because it's very difficult to copy and paste stuff that's in a PDF. It comes over on top of the Google crap. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you a Google Doc. It's, uh, it, it's not editable. You have to just copy it to your own Google and download it and do what you want. We'll give you that link in a bit. Let's now go into Q&A mode. Mitch, chuck some questions at Michael. Uh, there's lots of great questions. Miles <laughs> asked quickly, how do you segment the 5% for each send in terms of the headlines and stuff? Oh, just randomly, um, purely randomly. You can do it by date of entry for the entrance, uh, for, for the giveaway. You can do it by alphabetical, by the first name, by the email address. It, it, it's meant to be a random selection of this, of the list. Right. So don't know that just, just. Just take five percent and segment them uh, in like a CSV or, a, or a, an Excel sheet. Uh, Jackie wants to know what other methods to get leads that don't cost anything other than fa Facebook. Do you have any <clears throat> suggestions? Uh, in my, I just go here. If you don't want to spend money, don't go into marketing. If you <laughs> if if you if you buy leads for free, you're getting a ton of trouble. You're just getting crap. I read a really interesting quote a couple of days ago, actually. I think it was Matthew Kolbach who works with uh, Fast, Fast mm. Company. And he said um, the, one of the biggest problems with social media is it's given people the misconception that marketing is free. Right. And it's not. Right. Um, There's no such thing as free marketing. <clears throat> I can qualify that. You can, you can, you can promote to some channels for free, um, mm -hmm. but fundamentally, you're going to get what you pay for, really. Yeah. How much time, Giorgino wants to know, George, whatever. How much time between campaigns would you recommend? Sorry about the name, but. Yeah, um, right. I'm not very good at coming up with a really um, succinct and good answers on the spot. So my apologies. If any of my answers are crap, by the way, send me an email. I'm more than happy to give um, more oh, wealth. There you go. Uh, you should not have said that, dude. No <laughs> well, actually, I mean, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. Michael is actually in the Facebook group. So don't send emails. Go and ask him the question in the Facebook group, and that way everyone gets the answer. Yeah, Brilliant. Cool. There you go. Yeah, let's go. Cool. Cool. I'm, I'm useful for a few things. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question again? I don't want to skip over the fact that we... Um... Uh, the gap between campaigns. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So, Right, so we run one uh, that closed on uh, just before Christmas Eve. The next one we will do is going to be um, Valentine's Day. Then we'll probably run it one again at Easter. Yeah. So mm. I, as you can see, I'm a fan of, of attaching them to occasions. Um, yeah. You can also do milestones, like I recommended. Um, I, I don't think you can run them back to back. I don't think you can close one and then open one again because you're devaluing your brand a little bit. Um, so I think there's got to be some sort of separation between them so that they are their own standalone event. But at the same time, you don't have to run one a year. You can run them. Um, and again, you can you can segregate uh, a campaign and make it a standalone event by partnering with people because then every event will take on a completely different branding and a different message yeah. because you've got different partners and different products to tie up with your own. So um, don't run them so frequently. Like it's the same thing that if if you've always got a discount offer on your products, are your products really worth that much or are they worth less and you just pumping the price up? 
same kind of thing. With I, love, I love the idea of uh, partnering with others because if these guys are focusing on food, you know, antipasta and all that kind of stuff, you know, telling pre-cooked mm -hmm. stuff. There's no reason why they can't go to a, a, a wine merchant's. Are they based in Swansea as well? No, they're based in Bournemouth. Bournemouth, okay. Uh, oh, it's England almost. <laughs> 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 if uh, they can go to uh, a wholesale wine company and say, hey, we've got this list of 3,000 people. It's Italian. Can you give us a, can we partner together with some Italian wines? So my exact idea is um, we're going to run one for... Um, for Valentine's Day, and mm. um, I read I read something before Christmas that the cos cosmetics industry has lost, I think something crazy like hundred million because of, pan of the pandemic. So um, the campaign oh, yeah. that I got uh, that I'm thinking about running now for the Valentine's Day one is to partner with a makeup company because their sales are down, and then running like um, like a date night. So um, the prize obviously aimed at ladies will be um, full makeup set and a luxurious yeah. Italian uh, meal, uh, and you can have a proper date night <clears> even if you're in and it can't go out. So, and so a hunky Italian with a six pack will deliver it. Is it one of those <laughs> type of things? <laughs> I think it's probably just a FedEx guy, but I, I can't guarantee his ethnicity. What else have we got, Mitch? Well, Mark, do you have the link to the Google Doc? Did you want to share that? I certainly do. I will do. Please. Uh, um, would a film release campaign work? Kelly says. Release? Oh, well, I suppose if it's Italian food and it's an Italian film like The Godfather or something, it would work in that respect. That was something we thought about actually as well but for the for the for one of the campaigns in the future, is creating a Spotify list that just yeah. so that it, um, it, it, yeah. again, it gives a little bit of virality and um, makes it a little bit unique. Because so, when, I, when, when I had the agency, one of the things we tried to do, we were launching um, one of these Make-A-Wish type organizations and we wanted to hook up with a new release of a film called peter pan because obviously you know, all that kind of stuff. and uh there is tons of things that you can do around that these, again these are tying into other events that you don't even have to partner with so if there's a film coming out you know, there's nothing stopping you just going getting some free tickets and say oh we're running this you win this pack you get this food you get this wine and we'll also send you these tickets uh, you know, there's a ton of stuff you can do. I'm yeah, just doing that. It's a great opportunity to actually give away that home entertainment system <laughs> that you shouldn't be giving away. Exactly. <laughs> watch the new film on this, you know, give them the thing to yeah. watch it on. Yeah. And that's with somebody who, who produces or provides. Uh, yeah, I love the there. idea of the Spotify list. I love mm. that idea. I really, yeah. really like that. I think I think that'll be a good one uh, again. Trying to get it set up in time and, and find yeah, a partner yeah. for them. Yeah, but uh, but I think it's a it's a cool one, you know. To it yeah. just just adds a little bit of, like a unique element to it. The, the David asked a really good question. I really do. I'm picking this one up, Mitch. That's fine. I really like this idea. He says, "Could up viral work for a crowdfunding campaign to fund a new product launch?" And I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, definitely. In fact, I've got a product here. I've got them on my head. And they, this outfit actually used something not as sophisticated or as good as a viral. Uh, and I'm trying to sort of like, hey, guys, mm -hmm. you need to be using this. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, if you were crowdfunding, yeah, I could see it working really well. You could do a wait list as well. As part of the crowdfunding, yeah. you get people teased mm -hmm. into it before you yeah. launch it. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's a, a wait list is really good actually for for stuff that's upcoming. And uh, you ask them to hit milestones. Like if once they've uh, referred one person, they qualify for a discount. Once they've referred five people, they qualify for a discount and a t-shirt. Uh, and, and just you know, on and on, on, so that you get you you start to build up the interest way before you you even launch. If I may, along that line, Beatrice asked, we also incentivize the referrer, which is what you're talking about right now, but we're struggling. It doesn't seem to work so well. Only a 6% conversion rate for referrers. What advice do you have? Uh, it, well, it, it, there's obviously there's so many different elements. It would require um, looking into the campaign in full, but it, it, is it the, the landing page is not succinct enough? Could it be that the people don't understand what it is they're in a competition for? Is it a digital or physical product? Um, is the sharing page succinct and easy to, to scan through and, and understand what it is, actions they've got to take? It, there's lots of different elements to it, really. So um, it, the, the fact that the referral price is in place is a, is a good thing. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that that's 
but, it, but it's not the silver bullet at the same time. There are several elements to, to Can I, I, I just want to ask a, 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 a question. It's not that someone has seen, but it was sort of like knocked a card out of my head. Um, the client, you say they their, their website is being put together using Wix. Is that correct? Okay. That's right. So, again, we are not talking about a very expensive heavy lifting of a site here. What are they using for their autoresponders to send out the email campaign? Bloody Wix. Uh, <laughs> despite, really? Despite, despite, my, uh, despite my protestations, um, I told them, but if I, I think, I mean, that's, that's a, a, a great part of Wix's model, isn't it? They, yeah. They've got the customer in to build a website. And mm -hmm. even though I told them there are better options for your email marketing, they went with the Wix option because- So again, needs. they did not go out and spend a small fortune on expensive autoresponders. There was no no tagging, nothing sophisticated going on here. It's just get the leads, get the leads, fill your boots. Yeah, yeah, basically. I'm, like, I'm not saying I would necessarily recommend that, but I'm a marketer. I'm, I'm going to want the fancy tools. Um, it doesn't sure. mean it doesn't work with the, with the, um, with the simplistic setup. Like, yeah, like but you can always tidy that up because to an element, you did that with Unbounce, didn't you? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Cool. Never bounce. Never bounce. <coughs> Never bounce. My bad. No affiliates. I have no, no, no skin in the game with them. I just don't yeah. want to send people to one bounce because they're crazy expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. that was my bad. There. <laughs> yeah, there are several good tools for that. And earlier, I talked about uh, in the chat. Somebody asked about. I actually, Upviral has a connection to one of the tools. Uh, if you go into the advanced settings, uh, there is a way you can connect to a tool called email list verify oh yeah oh, cool. and also 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 the uh up viral is <clears throat> when you're creating a social god, social image no oh, god i can't say it <laughs> social share image there is a link directly from that section to go into uh canva and then suck it in for you we've we've got that api connection i love that one Mm. I love that one. Michelle Good. wants to know, what do you suggest as a welcome email series to have a smooth transition from freebie seekers to customers? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> so the big one is, is if, yeah, as long as you're talking about emailing directly to the, to the giveaway entrance and not your list in general. So it, there's a, uh, you need to segregate them basically. Hmm. So the first thing we did was um, we said, thank you, sorry, we didn't, um, sorry you didn't win, but here's a discount code. Um, but also if you don't want these emails, please unsubscribe. Then the, you'll see it, if you see, get to the Google doc, um, there's, there's a four email, a four part email sequence that are put together that we will be sending out. So you'll see that the full, that's effectively our welcome sequence to the, the giveaway entrance. And second email, um, uh, what the, what's the second email? I think it's, um, Nope, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what, what it is. Is that it's, part of the document that you've... Developed? It's part of the Google Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's but effectively, like, there are welcome sequences for people who sign up to your newsletter. There are welcome sequences to people who um, who uh, redeem a discount code. And there are welcome sequences for giveaway entrants. And that one specifically is for giveaway entrants. So that should be, that should answer the question in terms of, like, um, what it is we put, the, the exact information we put in those... Right. Yeah, in those emails. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've lost Mark as typical with his internet connection. Okay. I'm sure he'll be right back. David wants to know, how do you get the wheels turning? Paid media influencers. We didn't talk about influencers. Do you have any in that niche? Uh, no, not yet. Um, it's something we're going to look at, of course. So because we were starting from zero and the time constraints that we had, uh, the um, we just went with Facebook ads for the initial traction. Facebook ads and the giveaway site. Those were the only two methods of promotion. And then the virality started to kick in. Um, run into, um, if, if, if you've got an, an existing audience, then start with your email, existing email list because, okay, you're not gonna get new subscribers by telling your email list about your giveaway, but you, you're hoping that they'll still enter and then share it and get right. in front of new, uh, use your existing audience right. to gain new audience. Right. Um, and then partnerships is a huge one, it's huge get a partner and use their audience. You don't have to spend your time building 5,000 email subscribers when you can just speak to somebody who's already got that and say, donate the prize, 
um, we'll cross promote, well, I'll promote it to mine. And if you don't have anybody to promote it to, that's why I say offer to do the legwork. You've got to, you've got to incentivize them somehow. So if you're going to somebody and you've got zero, they've got 5,000, what's in it for them? Right. Well, I'll do all the work. Well, <clears throat> you, I, you, I, I just want to, um, before, because we've, we've gone over the hour. Uh, and, and we'll stay here if you want us to, everyone. If you want, you know, I, but Michael, um, as a family, and he, you know, it's not early in the morning. He's in the, over in the UK. And it's getting up to, what time is it for us now? Four o'clock in the afternoon. So, okay, no worries. But what I, I appreciate that. But what I want to tell everyone that's on the call, the link that I sent to you to get the Google Doc, there is an Easter egg inside that Google Doc. Okay. Ooh. Little, ooh, yeah. There is an Easter egg inside there from Michael. Michael has got something inside there, and you all can go into it because not only, as you, I'm not going to take too much, but a bit of a giveaway. Michael said that not only does he run an agency, but he also helps and trains people as well. Go check out the document and you'll see a nice little Easter egg in there. I'm not going to tell you any more than that. Okay. Nice. Carry on, guys. <laughs> cool. uh, one of the questions <clears throat> earlier, by the way, was uh, I, I don't think it's obvious to some people, but if you're running an agency, can you use just one account or does the client have to have their own account? Is that a question to me or? I know uh, what the answer is. It's not to you. I wanted to hear what. Okay. My yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that actually. So I set up a, I set up an account for the for the client to be able to access. Um, mm. I don't know if I could have set one up and then have multiple clients access it. <clears throat> if you can, then I'm going to get that one because that's what one I need. <laughs> uh, well, there the 250,000 leads um, that's listed on my plaque. A lot of that was clients, right? It's not mm. all just me. Uh, so that's that's the good news for now until Up Viral decides to. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here but we go. you, the other yeah, side yeah, of that, yeah. however, there's two sides yeah, of it. Yeah, right? yeah, Mark, yeah. hold on. There's two <laughs> sides of it. One is, does the client want to be able to manage their campaign mm -hmm. later? Do they want to see their own statistics? Because you don't want to run a, a, a client's campaign mm -hmm. in a single account if they want some kind of access. So therefore, you would get them to buy mm -hmm. their own. Uh, account, right? So there's there's plus and minuses for doing it mm. in one account. See, there wasn't that bad, Mark. <laughs> All right. It's not as if you've asked me the set. It's, it's, yeah. All I can say is there is something afoot. Nice. Well, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I One of the other questions that I wanted to talk about is I don't remember whether or not you specified, yeah, I see that, Mark, uh, yeah. whether or not you <laughs> clearly identified to people or whether you thought about it about because it's a local campaign right it's not worldwide uh you didn't specifically say uk only or anything in the ads do you think that would have changed the result are you are did you look to see if people were outside did you do the geo targeting kind of stuff inside we the, we did, no no not inside of we did with the facebook ads um so so no again i, I mean i'm Obviously, I'm a newbie with, with right. up virals, so I didn't know all of these things that you, all these features you mentioned. I didn't know about them. Right. So, so, so no, I didn't set it up. I, I did with the Facebook ads because I, I know Facebook. I, I love it. But, um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Clive says he's found the Easter egg already. Good for you, Clive. Way to go. Uh, okay, everyone asking about the slides. Uh, right. Okay, you've got the PDF. Uh, sorry, the Google Doc. Uh, that's cool. We've got a copy of the slides, and what we'll do is we'll make sure that we will upload the slides to our bin bucket, whatever you want to call it, and we'll also get the slides out to everyone. Uh, I'll have a word with our marketing manager, William. We'll either shoot them out in an email, we'll put it into the Facebook group, but we'll make sure that you get the uh, slides as well. Thank you very much, Mark. Ooh, Michael, cool. there's a question from Michael. He says, well done on your results, Michael. Would you would a campaign for a music community membership where the monthly subscription is low ticket, eight pounds, would that could that be something you would promote with Upfire? Okay. Well, firstly, well done on the on the good name, Michael. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, with that kind of thing, I mean, um, you kind of look at them as a similar to Spotify. Maybe you want to look at the, the way Spotify onboard people. Um, you, you want to be 
you'd want to have some sort of freemium setup, I guess, so that people can try it and see if it's worthwhile paying seven ninety nine a month for the, for the full version. So with a giveaway, you, you, you don't want to give away your freemium offer because then um, what's the point? You, you should have that completely separate. That should be on your website anyway. That, that, that's your main lead magnet is to get people to, to try a 30-day, um, 90-day free trial or whatever. So again, I know I keep saying the same thing, sorry, it's, but, but I would go with a physical product. What can you give away that people can listen to on that? They, they can listen to your music um, subscription service. So can you give away some sort of smartphone or, um, or headphones or whatever so that the, the music we're listening to is, mm. is uh, optimal? And then partnering with people who give that stuff away. Don't go out mm. and buy a 250 pound set of headphones to give it away. Find somebody who already got that stuff in, in their stock room and get them to promote it to their audience as well. Mm. It's, 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 you can't cut and paste this stuff with everything, no. but there are some fundamentals, I think, that will work across the board. Mm. Well, another another option could be, and I have done this, oh, is cool. to give away. If you're talking about your membership, give away <laughs> a year, give away oh, yeah. a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. right. So, so, so it, 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 it's how all viral started. We right. we started off with lifetime. We you know give away lifetimes, uh, or give um, and we still do certain things like uh, get a month free, or you know. You, you do these type of things. You know, we've got the $1 trial. We've got 30-day trial. You know, all this kind of stuff. There's a question here, uh, and I, I, I really want to push on this one because this sure. is something very much directed at the pair of you, really. Uh, but not so much Michael, but it's definitely for the two of you. Please, what, and this is from Try, please, what can one use as a lead magnet for an advertising agency? Okay. Great question. Um, Go, Michael. For me, for me, it's education. Uh, if you can give somebody, if you can teach some somebody um, to do something that they can get immediate value out of, then their trust value skyrockets. In, in the, your trust value uh, skyrockets in their eyes. So you can say to them, "This is what I did. This is how I did it, uh, and this is how you can do it yourself." If you're able to offer that to people, and then you go away, they're like, "Wow, I'll never forget where I got that stuff from because." He taught me how to do it. I mean, I remember all of the people um, that I've read about and, and the stuff that I did that worked. I still follow those guys now mm. because I know. We, we often it's used to use um, the reverse, this type of education approach. We, uh, we would do it. Uh, one thing you can do here is you actually do something similar to this or show people how, you know, give away education and training. And then what you do is you show, you demonstrate how they can do it themselves. You know, you can do this, you can do this. Just like we have just done now. And what you will do is the client will start to say, oh, wow, this, they see, it's a very, it's a very clever tactic. It's, the re, it's a reverse belief, okay? It's a reverse belief pitch. What you do is you show them and you take them through, you break it down absolutely everything. And the client sat there going, looking at the numbers. They look at the results and go, holy crap, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Then all of a sudden, it's going on for half an hour, three quarters around the scene, all the things. And they go, this is brilliant. I've got to have this. But I haven't got the time to do this. And then you offer them, we'll do exactly. it for you. Right. It is the probably problem. the yeah. most effective yeah. tactic because you're not selling. They are selling to themselves. They are throwing the money at you at that point. It's, it's those stages, and it? it's the what, yeah. then the how, yeah. execution. So trust is Yeah. This is so what like, this is what it will do. That. This is what it will do for you. This is what uh, this is what I've got for you. This is what it'll do for you. This is what I want you to do now. Trust, desire, belief. So, so with Triumph specific specific question and, and mm. his example. So, what he asked, what? So, mm. what education broad answer? How mm. uh, create. Yeah, where you teach something very specific, how to get um, what I mind is how to get your first like visitors if you're sitting on zero. Um, how do you get your first email subscribers? How do you get your first sale, etc. And then they go through all of that. And because he's an advertising agency, what he wants them to do is to realize actually, I want this guy who's teaching me all this stuff to do it for me. Yeah. So then that's the sale that you yeah. you build up that you've educated them, mm -hmm. and then you say right, okay, I need to do it for you because I know what I'm doing, and you know you've read a PDF, you yeah. might know what you're doing. I can. So there you go. <laughs> you, you've probably you've probably seen that from Deborah there, Michael. Um, <laughs> from Deborah Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Sorry. Cool. I'm glad it's useful. I'm really glad it's useful. Well, that's and the the other side of that, people always ask because a, a, an agency is sort of a business to business thing, right? Can you do an up viral campaign for business to business? And Michael's just explained a really great way of making that happen. Question comes up all the time: Can I do this for business to business? It may not go as viral mm. as which as you want in terms of tons of leads, but the mm. other thing that you're looking for there is the referral side of it, right? That's the joy of up viral is getting somebody that that loves your training, for example, that mm. you're starting to give away, and then you stair step them up to a bigger offer. Mm. And say, well, if you refer somebody, I, you know, I gave you that that freebie yeah. thing. Now I'm going to give you this $97 training. If you refer mm. to people, that's the mm-hmm. trick with business to business is to get people to refer others. That's a good tip. It's good. Uh, that's a good stack on that, Mitch. Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure. David asks, is there a case study for crowdfunding? Not that I'm aware of. I don't remember. Well, there is uh, one. There is one. There is one. Book one. What are there's you? The book one. And there's also, a wetsuit thing, oh, type yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember the name of that outfit. But I if you correct. go to the web, upviral.com, then look at resources, case studies, there's a whole section inside there. I would probably say nearly all those, to some degree, are elements of crowdfunding, to be quite honest, because they're all selling a product. In some cases, it's a new one. It could be a new course, a new something. And I would say whenever you sell anything, it's crowdfunding, really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, well, let's talk about the Bunky case study. I mean, technically, yeah. David had no business before he ran his first campaign yeah. as, a, as a contest. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Good point. It is. A, it is. And I, and I would have instantly said no. But if you hadn't had that little conversation, it, it sparked the bulb. The light bulb, so to speak. We, we've all had light bulb moments <laughs> right. today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Susan said, I had a light bulb moment. Speaking of light bulbs. <clears throat> I think what we'll do here is we're coming up to uh, 16 minutes past. So we've been going just over an hour and a quarter. I'm got, let, let's put a cap on it. Let's do about another 10 minutes. No more than that. So Michael can go and... Uh, I'm sure he could love to stay here and talk, but I, I'm, I'm conscious that he's got a business as well. But what we could do is we could probably invite Michael back in a couple of weeks' time to see how the campaign sort of like boomerang back, what the sales were, what they're going to do in the next, you know, for Valentine's Day and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there is one thing, there is something that we did and uh, you know you don't i don't want you to just answer this straight away michael i want you to think about it there was something that we did last year and it was sort of like on the fly and we called it uh, a ride along okay a ride along campaign and the idea of a ride this is obviously got to be turned into a case study now, case studies are always after the fact a ride along we came up with the idea literally live uh, and the idea was that people can actually ride along with a campaign while it's in progress. I don't want you to volunteer for it because it, this might not be the right campaign for it to do. But uh, if you ever, ever do another campaign where people can ride along with it so they can enter it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but have a think about it. Have a think about that. Yeah, you can yeah. definitely talk about other campaigns that you've got coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Georgia asked earlier, I have everything on Shopify. Can I use that with an up viral campaign? Is that to me or to Mark? There is not a direct connection as of yet with Shopify, but you could put it in with a bit of work. You could do it. However, if I was going to be doing something like that, I would just let up viral host your campaign. Mm. I'd keep it flat to start off with. Mm. Um, as it, it's a, go ahead. I was just sorry, Mitch. I was just going to say, of course, it's advisable to host the the, uh, the giveaway on your own site, um, mm-hmm. but don't let that be a barrier. Just mm-hmm. just get it live. You're not going to yeah. know otherwise until you've tested all of these things. Mm-hmm. You're not going to know if it works or not. Um, so, so don't let that be a barrier to actually getting started. Well, see, I I have a, a little bit of a disagreement on that. <laughs> what? Um, you no, used you used an up viral custom domain, right? 
something something I, dot the brand name. You no, no, no. We, I used like, the up viral landing page. I, yes, you used an up viral landing page, but didn't you use a custom domain? One of your links was not um, pvir.al, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were all the, the like the I, Facebook ads ran. Well, I'm sorry. The, we, we didn't host it. We didn't host it on our own website or okay. anything. If you use for everybody, if you use an up viral custom domain, which not everybody does on their first campaign, especially in a 14 day trial, that's understandable. But then it is your branding. It is the or the client's branding if that's yeah. the way you're doing it. So you don't have even if you're using an up viral hosted page it still looks to the user as if it's on your domain, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a way of doing it. And, and I preach about this all the time. You don't have to say, well, I have to have it on Shopify. No, you can certainly link over to your custom up viral domain. It looks to them like it's on Shopify. You, I you, believe it looks to Google like it's on you, Shopify. You can add all the spinning rims and fancy flashing lights later on when you get more sophisticated. The trick with everything that the case studies that we all look at now, that when you roll it all back, it's simplify, execute, you know, ship it, ship it, ship it, ship it. You will make mistakes. It won't be perfect. You know, um, the, the, as you've seen, what we, if there's one thing that you have taken away from what Michael has shown us today is, was it right? No. Was it perfect? No. Did I make mistakes? Yes. Could I do it better? Yes. Did it reach all the goals I wanted? No. But by God, because I shipped it and packed it and got it out there, I got a result. Right. And, and that is that is it. So, and if you haven't got a product, what do you do? Uh, uh, for me, product validation. You start anyway, and and um... yeah. You need an email list. If, if, you, if you're in a position where you haven't launched yet, you'd have a big advantage to, to the way we did it, where the site was already live and they wanted mm. sales straight off the bat. Get that email list building up, and, and like yeah. Mitch described, as a, as a waiting list or something. Yeah. Start now and then pre-validate it so that when you do launch, you've got people to go right to and say, right, it's live. Mm. Do you want to buy it? I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Georgia asks, should everyone start a newsletter? If yes, does it viral handle this too? Well, when they opt into your campaign and they tick the little box, essentially you've got their name and email address to go into the campaign. Uh, that email address can then, you can send a newsletter to them as well. Do we handle it? Are we an autoresponder? The answer to that is no, we are not an autoresponder. We, will, we, we capture it and then send it to your autoresponder, or we will keep them so you can download them to go to the autoresponder. We send transactional e emails out so that when people enter your campaign, they're kept up to, yes, you're entered, a friend has entered, you've got this points now, you've got this reward, those type of, but we are not a autoresponder like uh, MailChimp. Yeah. yeah, we're not like that. Um, to answer the question, though, I think, um, should everybody have a newsletter? I don't think it needs to be a newsletter, but you need to have interaction with your audience. Mm -hmm. and, and your email is your single biggest asset as a company, um, because as <laughs> Donald Trump beautifully uh, <laughs> portrayed to everybody, you can lose access to your audience at any time if yes. you've got a foot wrong. Yes. So you need an email list. And if you've got an email list, then you mm -hmm. need to be keeping them more and more of the time. It doesn't need to be a newsletter, so mm -hmm. to speak. But you need to be in touch with them and you need to be able to go to them and ask for sales every now and again. Yeah. And the way that you do that without being salesy is by, you know, by, by being in touch with them regularly. So it doesn't need to be a newsletter. It doesn't need to be company news or anything. It can be your own thoughts, whatever. It doesn't need to be long. It can be a few hundred words. Just keep it ticking over. Keep the, keep the audience warm. Right. Well, I think what we're going to do, we're going to take one more question, Mitch, and then we will call it a day. All right. The so last one is Mordecai asked, I have a huge email list and no product. I'm looking for ideas on what to market. And and I love that Deborah also said or somebody, no product, you can do an affiliate offer. So we and Mark and I had a long conversation about affiliate offers the other day. But yeah, you can do that. Well, here, here's something you could do. And I'm not, you know, we've just seen a product which is cooked meats and things like that. And if you were so inclined, Michael has given you the template to do all this. 
Now, I don't know where I can get boxed, you know, what is in that box and everything, but I'm pretty sure that I could probably find a wholesale supplier that can get this sort of stuff and put it in some sort of rudimentary box for me. So there's no reason why each of you, you know, wherever you are in your state or whatever, could do something similar. Is there a delicatessen near you? I'm pretty sure there is a delicatessen near every single one of us. So there is a possible. I'm, I'm just trying to be creative and think out of the box here. You've got all the. If, if you don't mind me jumping in there, so yeah, that kind of thing, of course, it can work. And, mm. and yeah, use the use the Google Doc and rip everything that I've, I've provided. I don't mind if you copy and paste it entirely. I don't care. Mm. Uh, but that kind of thing does take capital to get started. Yeah. So my approach with that would be, you've got an email list. Where do you get it from? Is it a bought email list, or have you acquired mm. that over time? If you've acquired it, how did you acquire it? What was the niche? Why did they Why did they give you the email address in the first place? Mm. And then what I would do is I would create like a Google form, a survey form, mm. and make um, make a, um, a form that asks specific questions related to that niche. Mm. So you're getting, you don't have to decide what to sell. You get those people in your email list to tell you what they want. Yeah. And then you sell it to them. Mm. And you ask for pre-sales. You say, right. okay, great. This is based on the feedback I got from all of those mm. Google forms. This is what seems to be most popular. Yeah. If I produce this, would you buy it? For all the people that say yes, Thank great. Buy it now for a discount, and then when I create it, you get it. You get it at a less price than than what you get um, when I launch it. For real. That, by the way, that by the way is a very similar process to. It will come to me in a minute. The newsletter, uh, Morning Brew. Have you all heard of Morning yeah. Brew? Yeah. Okay. Morning Brew came out a few years ago. I remember subscribing to it when it was like no one was doing it, and I remember I just started working at up viral and i'm thinking wow this is awesome this because it, essentially it's a it was built by a viral thing all they do is they send out an email once a day and i think it was to do with stocks and shares and market and all that that organization now has been valued just sending emails out one a day at 12 million okay 12 million dollars now they have branched out into and they've done exactly what michael said what else would you like to know about and you go i want this 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 and then surprisingly guess what you get the emails with that and they make their money by partnering with the people that are in it with the affiliate link in it and they've just been valued at 12 million yeah and all they send out is emails yeah awesome Okay, then, guys, um, we've got to. I have one question of my own, if that's okay. I hope you don't mind. Just a no, one minute. So, this is actually this was my first ever webinar. I'd love to know mm. how did it go? Was it okay? How am I? How can I improve on the next one? Okay, well, what we'll do is I want everyone out of one, it sucked to 10 people. <laughs> this <laughs> kicked ass. Type it into the comments now and tell us was it one, it sucked, or 10, it kicked ass? Type your numbers in and let us know while you're doing that. I'll just start winding up. I just want to say, Michael, well done. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If this was your first webinar, look, we've got 11s, 10s, 15s coming in, uh, 12s. Oh, they yeah, awesome. loved you. And if this is your first webinar, dude, in a couple of weeks' time, in a couple of months' time, you're going to be rocking it. I just want to say thank you so much because when you – when I spoke to you last week on the phone and you were telling me what you were planning for this, this, I was like, okay, I've heard all this before. And I was like, when you delivered it and I saw it and William said, this guy's just emailed me all this stuff. And I don't think he realizes what he's giving away here. And I went, show me. I said, no, no, that's what he said. He did. I said, honestly, this guy is giving everything away. And then when we spoke today, I was like, so blown away i just want to say a thank you on behalf of wilco because if he was here he would and just so you know Wilco's not too well at the present moment oh, if he could be it. here he would definitely be saying thank you very much for the values one of the, the value of giving here is probably the most that anyone has given for a long long time uh, and That's we would fantastic. love to invite you back as another guest speaker um i think mm -hmm. we just tapped into a little bit of what you've got to offer so I'll be speaking to you, either myself or William Will, in the next couple of couple of weeks about what else that you can be bringing and doing on there, so that everyone gets some value. Yeah. Our, guys, yeah, you know, our clients do, and you do as well. And I just want to say thanks to you, Mitch, as well, 
for hosting these calls. Um, I can't remember. We've got another headliner coming up. I think the next headliner is in February. I'm not going to give the game away as to who that person is. All I can say is that, wow, lots of zeros, lots of zeros with a dollar sim symbol at the beginning. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say thanks very much. Mitch, I'll hand it back to you so you can wind it up and say goodbye to everyone. I, I do appreciate you being here as well, Mark and Michael. Fabulous. Well done. Mark has been saying for, I don't know, two weeks. You can't believe this guy that's coming on the show. You're going to just be blown away. So when Mark's doing that, you know it's going to be a high quality deal. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for being here. We do have some exciting shows lined up for coming up. You can, of course, always get the replays. The links will be attached to the replays mm -hmm. wherever you get them. Uh, I believe Mark's going to send out a, a follow-up email with the replay link as well. So we'll take care of you. Stick with Up Viral. We love you showing up every week. Please tune in again. Same oh. bet time, same bet channel. One, one last thing. Don't forget, everyone. You yeah. said we've got questions. We want to email right. Michael. Don't email Michael. Right. Going straight away into the Facebook group. Michael is in there. He's got His, his company's logo is a light bulb if you start looking for him just he, he is in there and ask your questions and michael then everyone can see it you asked for it michael yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fine that's fine pleasure shane your comment in the chat box i want to see you here next week and the week after he's been sitting on the fence for four years come on baby let's do it show up okay. all right there's your challenge thanks for tuning in everybody mike thank you for being here We'll talk to you again next Thank Tuesday. You. See you now. Take care. Bye.